class. Well, we're still quarantined because of the virus, so we'll continue the teachings. Martha and I are in our conference room here. Got the pictures that some of you sent, so I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable. Hello, Dolly. Hello, Bruce. Hello, Dane, Penny, Delbert, Sherry, and Welby. Some of you haven't sent me your pictures yet. We got to get the whole class in our conference room to make me feel a little bit more comfortable. But I do want to say this to you. Happy Easter. Tomorrow will be Easter Sunday. For the first time probably in America, we won't be meeting in the buildings. We'll still be quarantined in the homes and we'll do these teachings through the internet. The pastor will be preaching tomorrow, of course, as usual, and we will be sending that to you uh, via, via the internet. So today we want to say he is risen. Amen. He has conquered death. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus Christ is alive. Jesus has risen and gone on to prepare a place for us, a place for his bride, the church. And he left the church behind on earth to carry on. So the question today is, who or what is the church? We are the church. If you're in my Sunday school class, you have been saying this for months now. When I ask you who's the church, you'll go in unison. We're the church, and that is correct. God's adopted children are the church. The church is not the buildings that we meet in. The church is the people of God. The buildings are just a place where the church congregates or meets. It could be a house. It could be an apartment. Uh, we could meet in a tent in the jungle, a retail store, a barn. Missionaries that we support understand this. All over the world, we have missionaries that are meeting in homes, apartments, out in the jungles. They understand who and what the church is. It is the people. At one time, our church had one building. We had a building over on 82nd and Indiana that we met in on Sundays. And then we had two buildings. We had the building on 82nd in Indiana, and then we built a new structure on 98th in Indiana. And then we sold the building just a while back uh, on 82nd in Indiana to a school. So that building is now a school. The building never was the church. A building is brick and steel and mortar. It has no feelings. It can't speak to anybody. It's just a building. So the people are the church. Someone asked me one time where my church met. And I said, well, my church is all over Lubbock. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, my church is all over Lubbock. On Sunday mornings, my church congregates at 98th in Indiana. You see, the church is on the move. The church is alive. We are the eyes, hands, ears, and feet of Jesus Christ, not the building. Now we ask, if we are the church, which we are, then what is the purpose of the church? The purpose of the church is to grow, to tell others about the good news of Jesus Christ, to love and pray over others, and to care for others. We are to let Jesus build the church, though. We don't build the church. Jesus Christ grows the church, not us. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 18, Matthew 16, verses 13 through 18, it says this, Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he began asking his disciples, saying, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, and others Elijah, but others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because of flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not overpower it. Now we know that Jesus wasn't telling Peter that he was going to build the church on Peter. He was saying on this rock, meaning 
the revelation that Peter had about who Jesus was. And it says clearly, I will build my church. You see, Jesus Christ builds the church, not us. Everything that we do should be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. We should be listening to the Holy Spirit of how Jesus wants to build his church. There's a church in town that decided to build a new sanctuary. And they put it in front of the church. The leadership put it in front of the church and they raised money and they were getting ready to build this sanctuary. And just before they were ready to finalize all the plans and everything, the leaders of the church met. And the night before, the Holy Spirit had spoken to all of the leaders. And when they met that morning to, to meet over deciding on what to do, every one of them shared that the Holy Spirit had told them not to build the big sanctuary, but to build a building at another location for the poor and the underprivileged. And they brought that to the church, the people. And the people agreed, if that's what the Holy Spirit wanted, then they should be led by the Spirit. So they changed direction. And God built a facility in the northern part of Lubbock to, to take care of the poor and the underprivileged. And that blessed the city of Lubbock, and it also blessed the church that built that structure. They were led and guided by the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, if we turn over to Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, 46 and 47 says this, And day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their numbers day by day those who were being saved. This is the first church. This is Acts. And it says here clearly, the Lord was adding to the church daily. So the people were out and about, but it was the Lord that were bringing people. It was the Holy Spirit that was calling people uh, to, to salvation. And they were accepting Jesus Christ. And it clearly says the Lord grew the church, not the people. The people were doing the work of, of the Lord but the Lord was the one that was actually building the church. Our purpose is also to take care of one another. One of our purposes is to, to do the work of Christ as Christ grows the church, and another is to take care of people. Let's go to Acts, back to Acts 2, verses 44 through 45. 44 through 45. And all those who had believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have need. You see, I don't worry about this crisis that we're in, this lockdown that we're in. A lot of people are worried about paper towels and toilet paper and whatever they need. But I belong to the church. I, I am in the church. I am in the body of Christ. I am in the, 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 the church of God. So let's say I need toilet papers. All I'll have to do is call up Welby Smith, drive over to his apartment where he's quarantined. He can't get out. And he has a little balcony up there and he'll throw me out a roll of toilet papers and some banana pudding and some of Luana's chocolate pie. I mean, if I'm going for toilet papers, I might as well get the whole, whole deal. You see, Welby will take care of me as any of you would. The church will meet the needs as they did in Acts. That is the purpose of the church. The government meets needs, but it doesn't say we're supposed to call on the government. It says that the church will meet our needs. And so, if we are Christians, where are we going to put our faith? Are we going to put our faith in government, in, in other places, or are we truly going to put our faith in the church? I think I'll put my faith in the church. The church consists of different people with different roles. Every single Christian has a vital role to play in the body of Christ. God has given us specific gifts to use in the church. When God designed the church, 
He did not intend for us to be Christian clones. He didn't wind us up as little robots. We're all different. We're different heights. We're different sizes. We're different ages. And he, all, he gave us all gifts to use. No one is more valuable than the other. No gift of the Holy Spirit is better than another. And therefore, each, each individual has a special place of significance within the body of Christ. Let's read in the book of Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. It says this, And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the statue, stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. You have a gift. Some of you might have a gift of teaching. Some of you might have a gift of rocking babies. Some of you might have a gift of being a prayer warrior. Some of you might have a gift of a peacekeeper. Some of you might have a gift to be a greeter. Some of you might have a gift to be a pastor, an evangelist. Some might be a bus driver to pick up college students. Some might be good hosts to offer your homes for kids to meet and hear the gospel. There are all sorts of gifts given by the Spirit, and they are to be used in the church to glorify the Lord and to grow His church. In other words, we are all servants. No one is more special or greater than the other. We are to be servants, or we are to be serving one another by working in the gifts that God has given us. We are to also follow in the footprints of the Lord. Somebody read Mark 10, 45. Hey, Bruce, you read Mark 10, uh, 40, 10, 45. Give me a call and see if I can get that. Well, I can tell you what, since we're not here really, I can see you, Bruce, but I'll read Mark 10, 45 for us. So let's go back to Mark. 10:45. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mark 10, verse 45, says this, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Christ came to serve. Christ grows his church to serve. We are nothing but servants of a living God who loves us and cares for us and has gone on to prepare a place for us. This Easter is a special Easter. We will not be able to meet in person, but it does not stop the church. Now, the devil might have thought this was a pretty good deal to put this virus on us. Some of us have become sick. Some of us have even died. And he took the church for meeting in the buildings. But he did not destroy the church. The church is us. And we are still here. And our faith is still strong. And we remember on Easter what Jesus Christ did for us. He arose from the grave. The stone was rolled away. And he has ascended to sit at the right hand of the Father. And we as his children, the church, remain on this earth doing the work of Jesus Christ. And until he comes back, we will continue to be faithful and do his work as only the church can. Amen. And you have a happy Easter. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this Easter. Father God, different from all the other Easter's, but Lord God, we are strong. The church is alive and well. And Father God, we lift up our voices in praise to you this Easter. Father God, we thank you for what you've done for us. We thank you how you've kept our, our church healthy. Father God, we thank you how you've met our needs. And Father God, we depend upon you each and every day. And Father God, we pray that if anyone hearing this message today is, is discouraged and downhearted, Father God, that you come into their homes, Father God. You lift them up. You encourage them, Father God. 
And Father God, if they do not know your Son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior, Father God, today be their day wherever they hear this message, Father God. This Easter, Father God, you grow your church. Father God, we thank you for what you do, and we thank you for what you were about to do. In Jesus Christ's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you for uh, watching this. If you want to, you can send this out. I had a friend of mine. He got it uh, on his YouTube account. Called me up. Uh, used to be in our church way back there. Uh, give a shout out to Bobby and Kay McMichael. Some of you remember them. And uh, uh, so send it out to whoever you want to. Let's see who many, how many people we can reach. You stay safe and healthy. And we wait for the day that we can meet back in the building. And I will give you a hug and a warm handshake. Have a good day and may God bless you.